keep us from going the way of the dinosaurs, a network of professional and amateur astronomers around the globe are combing the galaxy. They map and name every asteroid they find, and so far they've located more than 100,000. One was discovered recently, the end of 2004. Fine, it was a new asteroid. Who cares? Until you start plugging in the orbital parameters into your computer. You plug those in, and then you watch where it goes. You can project forward where you expect to find this thing in the future. And you know what we found? This asteroid, on Friday the 13th, April 2029, will come close enough to Earth to dip below our communication satellites in orbit around Earth. This asteroid called Apophis will just miss us on this go-round. However, depending on how the Earth's gravity affects its orbit, we may not be so lucky when it returns seven years later. Depending on exactly where it passes in 2029, there's a decent chance, small, but uh, a very noticeable chance, uh, one in a few thousand, that it will then strike the Earth in 2036, actually on April 13th again. If Apophis does hit the Earth in 2036, the effect would be devastating. It would create a tsunami hundreds of feet high that could race across the ocean at supersonic speeds. It's big enough to create the worst damage to life on Earth in recorded history. While the impact could wash away large parts of California, Apophis is not big enough to wipe us out completely. And luckily, odds are we'll dodge this bullet. But scientists say sooner or later, Earth will be in the sights of a much bigger asteroid, one big enough to wipe out civilization entirely. So what is humanity doing to address this deadly threat? The number of people worldwide who are working actively on this problem is enough to staff one shift at a McDonald's. And that's about accurate. I like what they always show in Hollywood. As the asteroid comes, people hear it, and they look up, and they see this flaming ball moving. These objects are moving 10, 15 miles per second. That is hypersonic. You're not going to hear it. You're not going to see it. It takes it a few seconds from when it first hits the top of the Earth's atmosphere to when it actually touches down. During those few seconds, it glows not red hot, not yellow hot, white hot, getting up into violet hot. And that is so hot that if you were anywhere on Earth in the big circle of uh, maybe a 1,000 miles diameter, where you could actually see this thing coming down, the heat and light coming off of it would just burn you to death immediately. Then it hits. And it starts digging the crater. It takes a long time for a big crater to form, maybe a minute, as the Earth, what you think of as solid rock, gets splashed out by this enormous impact. There would be massive tidal waves and earthquakes, but the worst part would be the gigantic mushroom cloud of debris that would reach all the way into space. An asteroid that size is large enough to thrust large quantities of Earth's crust into the atmosphere. Within as little as an hour, even people on the opposite side of the planet would begin to feel the effects of the impact. You look up at the sky, and you, you might see a few shooting stars. Even as daylight, you might see a few shooting stars. Quickly thereafter, you see like 10,000 shooting stars per every square centimeter, or several tens of thousands per every square inch. So the entire sky, instead of just being little streaks of shooting stars, would flash up into a rosy red glow, which would look and feel like someone had shoved you into a self-cleaning oven being cleaned. The falling debris would burn up in the upper atmosphere, creating a layer of fire that would blanket the planet. 60 miles below the surface of the Earth would spontaneously ignite into a worldwide firestorm. The sulfuric ash from the firestorm would drop the ocean's pH level to that of battery acid, turning most of the Earth into an uninhabitable wasteland. 